I wholeheartedly believe that this is the best video I've ever made when it comes to giving you guys a step-by-step -step strategy, if you will, to dominating your dynasty rookie drafts. If you're super flex or one quarterback, this is for the whole damn gang, okay? A whole lot we're gonna cover in hopefully in un under 30 minutes. We're gonna talk about what players history tells us to target and what players history tells us to leave on the board. We'll talk through strategies, simple strategies, not foreign languages, and we'll talk about how to maximize each of your draft picks. And the good news, the best news of all, is that all the information I bring to you guys today will be relevant today, after the NFL draft, and in future drafts to come in future years. So 10 points, 10 ways to absolutely dominate your dynasty rookie drafts. Number one, always maximize value with every draft pick you have. Every single year, the dynasty community is convinced with passion that the 101 is going to be the most valuable player in a rookie draft. There's no way around it. It's always going to be the 101. And typically, it just doesn't work out that way. If you look at super flex drafts from the last five years, this is um, ADP pulled from Dynasty League Football via Ryan McDowell. Shout out to them. If you look at the last five years, in 2019, yes, it was the 101. In 2020, Justin Jefferson was the most valuable player in super flex rookie drafts. He went at the 111. Jamar Chase in 2021 was the most valuable player. He went at the 104. In 2022, it was Brees Hall. And in 2023, CJ Stroud was the 104 in ADP via DLF. But a lot of people thought it was the 101 every single year. On average, in the past five years, the 104 out of those five players. Meaning, in three of the last five Superflex rookie drafts, 60% of the time, the most valuable player did not come from the 101. Why is that important? We'll keep... Just hang on there with me, okay? In one quarterback formats, let's look at the past seven years. You can see only in 2022 and 2023 was the most valuable player drafted from the 101 ADP consensus. In five of the last one, uh, five of the last seven one quarterback rookie drafts, 71% of the time, the most, va most valuable player did not come from the 101. So how do you maximize value in your rookie drafts? Well, you maximize value by trading back from your pick. Get the most value out of your pick. View it as an asset. Don't put a player's name in there because players bust all the time, okay? If you have the 101, for example, trade that back to the 102 to the 106 and get picks in return and players. Get someone's future 25 first to trade back right? What happens if their team falls apart? At the 107, trade back to the 110 to the 112 and get picks and players that you like. Any pick, trade it back for future draft capital, for capital in that, in that draft or for a player you really like or use it to tear up to a different player. Look, don't just make a trade to make a trade. Make sure you're getting good value, but always look for the most value. If we look at super flex drafts, in the last five years, all right, this is some of the research I did for you guys this week. The 107 has a worse hit rate, okay, than the 108, the 109, the 110, the 111, and the 112 in the last five years. All right, superstar means a quarterback or a tight end that was top six or a running back or a wide receiver that was top 12. If you look at one quarterback formats, okay, the one. 10 actually has a higher hit rate for superstars than the 103 to the 112. There's a lot of randomness in dynasty rookie drafts. Of course, we do our best to prepare, but we have to be aware that there is randomness. Bet on a player already in the NFL, trade back and get more capital and give yourself more shots at the NFL draft. Think of your draft picks as assets instead of players with names, extract every bit of value that you possibly can. All right, the second point is only draft, and this is very important, and super flex and one quarterback, only draft quarterbacks who have been given round one NFL draft capital. That means if a quarterback is drafted in a round two to seven, let them fall in your rookie draft and let others take those players. In the last decade, Okay, from 2014 to 2023, I did this research myself for you guys this week, 59.4% of quarterbacks drafted in round one hit for fantasy football, hit meaning a top 12 points per game season. However, the drop off from round one to round two is 
massive. Round two is just 12.5% hit rate. All right, that's one out of eight players. That one player in the last 10 years is Jalen Hurts. And then you look at rounds three to seven, all well under 10% hit rate. The outliers there would be your Dak Prescotts and your Brock Purdy's. Think about this in the most recent drafts. Think about 2022, okay? Kenny Pickett went in round one, and then a bunch of quarterbacks that people like went in rounds three, four, and five. We consistently advise people do not draft Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, Matt Corral, or Sam Howell in your rookie drafts. But so many people were spending late firsts, mid seconds, late seconds on these quarterbacks when in reality, they were probably going to be dead assets. If you really want to bet on a round two guy and you think I'm wrong, make sure that round two guy has rushing upside because the only player in the last decade that has broken that curse, if you will, is Jalen Hurts. All right. And he had over 3,200 rushing yards in his collegiate career. So how do we apply that today? For me, that means if Michael Penix or Bo Nix are not first round picks, they will be off my draft board. I will let someone else take them in round two and I will take the running back instead. All right. Number three, the least risky bet that you can make in a dynasty rookie draft, the most secure bet that you can make is a round one running back. Round one running backs have an 85.7% hit rate, okay, in the last decade. A hit rate is a top 24 points per game season. That is within their first four years, by the way. Here are the running backs who were drafted in round one since 2014. Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, Zeke Elliott, Leonard Fournette, CMC, Saquon, Rashad Penny, Sony Michelle, Josh Jacobs, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Bijan Robinson, and Jameer Gibbs. 12 out of 14 of those players had a top 24 points per game season in their first four seasons. And by the way, every single running back that you see here that hit all the running backs in blue or in green, excuse me, all of them were ranked as top five dynasty running backs at one point or another. So some of them you could have built around. You could have built around um, Josh Jacobs. You could have built around CMC, Saquon Barkley, Zeke Elliott. Some of them you couldn't, right? Like Clyde Edwards Hilaire, like Najee Harris. But if you sold those guys at the right time, if you capitalized on their value at the right time, you would have traded for foundational pieces for your dynasty team moving forward. All right, number four, the second least risky bet you can make in a dynasty rookie draft. All right, the second safest bet is a round one tight end. Tight ends in round one in the last decade have a 77.8% hit rate. That is a top 12 season in fantasy football on a per game basis for the tight end position. Here are the tight ends who were drafted in round one since 2014. Eric Ebron, OJ Howard, Evan Ingram, David Njoku, Hayden Hurst, TJ Hawkinson, Noah Fant, Kyle Pitts, and Dalton Kincaid. Seven out of nine of those tight ends had a top 12 points per game season. And just like the running back position we just talked about, some of those guys didn't pan out in the long run. But if you sold them at the right time, you could have traded them for pillars. OJ Howard had a top five season. If you sold him at the right time, you would have got plenty uh, plenty of assets in return to build around your dynasty team. Noah Fant had a couple top 12 points per game seasons. And even though it says 77.8%, I think that should actually be at 88.9% hit rate. Because Dalton Kincaid is the only guy who hasn't hit outside of Hayden Hurst. And I think he's absolutely going to hit a top 12 points per game season here in 2024. So this time next year, that number could be even higher. It is a safe bet to bet on Brock Bowers. All right. If you're in a tight end premium, you should feel very good about betting on Brock Bowers. Remember, people weren't excited about TJ Hawkinson for a while, but then he became the tight end one, two, or three in a lot of people's dynasty rankings and premium formats, that's a cheat code, okay? Even if you don't want to build around the player. All right, number five, first round wide receivers. We all love them, but they have a lower hit rate than you think they do. They have a lower hit rate than you think they do. 48.6% of wide receivers drafted in round one in the last decade have hit, meaning have had a top 24 points per game season. If we were to look at every round and every position, where do you guys think that ranks in terms of reliability or safety from a draft pick? Well, I got it for you here. 
Round one running backs, 85.7% hit rate. Round one tight ends, 77.8% hit rate. It goes down all the way to number six overall, round one wide receivers. They are the sixth most reliable bet to hit in their first four years for fantasy football. Some wide receivers who were drafted in the first round recently who didn't hit, we always think about what they would do if they hit. What if they don't? Traylon Burks, Jamison Williams, Jahan Dotson, Kadarius Toney, Rashad Bateman, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Rager, Nikhil Harry, Corey Davis, John Ross, Corey Coleman, Josh Doxson, and Laquan Treadwell. Okay? They don't always hit. Now, what does that mean? Am I sitting here telling you not to draft wide receivers in round one, even though 2024 is stacked? No, of course not. Of course, I'm not saying that. Every NFL draft is unique. We can't treat every NFL draft the same. There are strengths and weaknesses of every class, and we need to adjust. For example, this year, we think the quarterbacks and the wide receivers are going to be stellar, but they might not. So don't take this information and rule out wide receivers in your draft. However, you should be able to maybe dream up of a more realistic outcome for your pick and decide if you want to keep it or sell it for a guy who has already hit in the NFL. All right. Number six, landing spots. And this is big. Okay. Landing spots should be the decider between round four and round five NFL draft running backs when you're drafting in your rookie draft. Okay, that's a mouthful. But in the NFL draft, a running back goes round four or round five. It should not matter the draft capital from that point. You should not point to this guy was round four, this guy was round five, therefore I'm taking the round four guy. There is no evidence in the last 10 years to suggest that that is a good move. Okay? Round four in the last 10 years has a 17.1% hit rate. 17.1%, 17.1%, seven out of 41 running backs. Round five has a 16.7% hit rate, five out of 30. So again, you cannot justify selecting a certain running back in a rookie draft because they went in round four and the other guy went in round five. So here's some hypothetical examples that are easy for us to work out together. So let's say, just hypothetically, Braylon Allen goes in round four to the Bears and Audric Estime goes in round five to the Vikings. I have those guys in my prospect grades very similar. I'm going to take Audric Estime. You might disagree, but that is a better landing spot in my opinion. Round four, Bucky Irving to the Jets. Round five, Marshawn Lloyd to the Cardinals. Yeah, Bucky Irving went around early. I don't care. History tells us we shouldn't care. I'll take Marshawn Lloyd, who has an older James Conner on his roster, who's always injured instead of Brees Hall, the young, you know, stud in the making. Okay. So let me know if that makes sense in the comments below. I hope you guys are loving this video. I've got three, four more points for you, but do me a favor, smash that like button. The amount of effort I put into this, I mean, my wife is probably annoyed because I should have hung out with her more this week, but I was so excited to make this video for you guys. I'm going to get into point number seven, but just quickly, if you want your dynasty team reviewed by myself and Badaki on a live stream, we go live three times a week at night to review our supporters teams on a live stream to give them direction on where they can go. Then use the promo code land and become a mother flocker member on the flock fantasy website. Direct link is in the pinned comment, but we are giving you a little sneak peek here. The my teams feature is in beta mode right now. You can see what it looks like. You can import your team, sync your team from Sleeper, see where you stand in the Flock Fantasy Community rankings. Eventually, you'll be able to use my rankings to see where I would have you standing within your league. You can have a look at where your strengths lie, where your weaknesses lie, and eventually, you will be able to submit those teams for us to review on a live stream. That is so cool. I'm so excited. Again, use the code LAND, become a mother flocker if you want access to that. All right, moving on to point number seven. And this one is quite self-explanatory, so we won't spend too much time on it. But just be aware that the 101 to the 106 is most likely to produce a superstar in fantasy, both for Superflex and one quarterback formats. This ADP that was gathered by myself is available on Dynasty League Football's website via Ryan McDowell. But A superstar is a top six quarterback slash tight end points per game finish on a year. And it's a top 12 running back slash wide receiver points per game finish on a year. And if you're looking at the misses, which we'll talk about, that is 
players who finished outside top 12 or top 24 uh, in their first four years. They weren't able to, to complete that. So the 101 to the 106, 40% of those picks in the past five years, 12 out of 30 were superstars. From the 107 to the 112, only 26.7% hit that superstar status. Still a lot of randomness like we talked about before, but typically the players at the beginning of the board are going to hit a little bit more. That's why oftentimes when you're, you know, later in a draft, we talk about, okay, what is a player in today's NFL that you could bet on that you know is already good? How about one quarterback formats? In the last seven years, 43% of players in the top six were superstars and only 26% from the 107 to the 112 hit that superstar status. But more importantly for these two categories, the misses are so much more present in the later part of the first round and super flex 50% misses and misses again means the player finished outside the top 12 as a quarterback tight end or outside the top 24 as a running back wide receiver. So you can see the misses are just so much more pronounced in those late round picks. That one's probably obvious, but in case anyone cares. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, point number eight of any position in all of dynasty rookie drafts. Running backs in round one to three are the best bet by far. And this is what we talked about with round one, but I'm trying to go to a further extent. Rounds one to three are fantastic bets. Let's look at the hit rate for a running back. You can see on this graph that I've been showing you guys a lot. By the way, everything that you're seeing in today's video is going to be in our 2024 rookie report. The next version that releases after the NFL draft will have all this information that we're going to talk about today in a you know, a PDF format, if you will, this graph as well. But if you look at this graph, running backs from round one to three, all greens across the board, um, rounds one to three have a 64.3% hit rate, 45 out of 70 running backs hit in the last decade from rounds one to three. So actionable advice from this information. If Trey Benson or Jonathan Brooks goes in round two, they should be given much more consideration for late first round picks in super flex leagues than we are currently giving them. Also, in one quarterback formats, they should be they should be considered, excuse me, top six to seven picks if they go in round two. And of course, if there's a guy that we don't see going in round two, we should take them much, much more seriously. It's very rare that those guys don't hit for your dynasty team. All right, point number nine, and we've talked a lot about what you want to target. But let's talk about some of the things that you definitely don't want to target in a dynasty rookie draft. Number nine, don't bet on outliers. If you do, you're probably going to be left with dead assets. Okay. So why don't we have a look at uh, the last 10 years? I'll show you where the vast majority of dead assets come from. By the way, dead assets, meaning under 10% hit rate. All right. So you do not want to draft dead assets. That means rounds three to seven for quarterbacks are off limits. There's always outliers. Those outliers recently, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy. And running backs, we typically do not want to bet on round six and seven. It's probably a dead asset. The outliers recently, Isaiah Pacheco, Chris Carson. From wide receivers, rounds four to seven. Typically, we do not want to bet on them. What happened last year? Puka Nakua was a fifth round pick and he made history. I guarantee you there will be people in your drafts who make decisions because of that outlier season. That will not happen again. I promise you that. Amon Ross St. Brown was a fourth round pick. Puka was a fifth round pick. But history tells us over the span of 10 years that that is not a good bet to make. It's a dead asset more times than not. More than 90% of the time. Tight ends from rounds five to seven, also dead assets. George Kittle is the main outlier there. And then we'll talk about burning money picks. Burning money means... They have a 0% hit rate in the last decade. You are literally just burning your money when you draft these players. All right, quarterbacks in rounds three, five, and six. You're burning money. Wide receivers in rounds six and seven. You're burning money. Tight ends in rounds six and seven. Again, you're burning money. And quite generally, I didn't add it in there, but if you look at all picks in the last decade from round six, less than 1% hit from all positions. So you're kind of burning money there too. A 99% chance you're burning your money with making that pick. All right, and the last point I'm going to bring to you guys today, 
man, I really hope you guys love this video. I love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Save it, send it to your league mates, watch it after the NFL draft if you want to. Again, I know I'm going to do it for myself to remind myself. But what you need to know is where the biggest drop offs are historically for each position. Okay. So positional drop offs in the last decade. The biggest drop off for quarterbacks is from round one to round two. We talked about that a little bit. There is a 46.9% drop in hit rate from rounds one to two for quarterbacks. For running backs, after round three into round four, there is a huge dip in hit rate, 37.4% drop off, which is why I personally will not have much interest in round four and five running backs. Why last year I, I drafted a lot of Devon A. Chan. I loved him. And I shouldn't have drafted as much for Sean Johnson as I did. I realize that now. Okay. Wide receivers from rounds one to two, there is a 20% drop off. It is the biggest drop off in that position. And for tight ends, the drop off is from rounds two to three. Any tight end in the first two rounds is typically a very, very good bet. But that drop off from rounds two to three is 31.4% percent okay and the biggest drop off which is why we talked about it at the beginning of this video of any position is quarterbacks from rounds one to round two again 47 percent drop off um, of that position which which is drastic and it's why i keep trying to um i guess bring home that point but what do you guys think a lot of information and hey i did it under 30 minutes so 10 steps 10, some of them were strategies, some of them were tips, ways to maximize your value of, of your draft pick. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you. All love. We'll see you soon. Go kill your dynasty rookie drafts. I know I'm going to be using this information to hopefully do the same. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.